dreams feel real while we're in them. It's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. Whatever happens, you may think it all a mere bad dream. Today I want to dive in on an Inception theory based on a game called Bloodborne. I'm going to start the video with the game's backstory and then I'm going to proceed into what I theorize about what is actually going on in this game. Bloodborne can be hard to understand. If you've ever seen the movie Inception, Bloodborne is its gothic twin brother. This video will attempt to break down what's happening in the story. None of this is real. You're in a dream. Now mind you, this is just a theory that I have about this game. Throughout I will explain how you are continuously diving deeper in a dream. A dream controlled by a great one, an eldritch god. Your goal is to find the one responsible for the nightmare and end it. You are an outsider to Yarnum, sick and dying. A man tells you he can cure you with pale blood, but you must sign a contract first. Pale blood? <laughs> well, you've come to the right place. Yarnum is the home of blood ministration. You need only unravel its mystery. But where's an outsider like yourself to begin? Easy, with a bit of yarn and blood of your own. But first, you'll need a contract. With the contract signed, the transfusion begins. The real world fades out, and the dream begins. Your character awakens in what is known as Central Yarnum. You are already in a dream. You do not know who is controlling the dream, but as a hunter, you must hunt down the beasts and eliminate them. It is what you were tasked to do with the contract. If you fail, the dream doesn't end. You cannot die. Those around you that you have defeated rise again. We know nothing about what exactly is going on, but as you progress through Bloodborne, you find items to aid you in your journey. Much of Bloodborne's story is told in fragments as you progress through the game. The Foundation of the Healing Church Yarnum was built upon an ancient underground labyrinth, Thumeru, also called the Chalice Dungeons. The Thumerians were known to normal people as ancient gods and referred to them as the Great Ones. The Great Ones operated on a different plane of existence and transcended the physical world. One of the Great Ones that was left behind was Abritus, daughter of the cosmos. Willem was the master of the school at Bergenworth, near a lake by a secluded forest on the outskirts of Yarnum. All of our main characters in Bloodborne can be traced back to Bergenworth. Bergenworth is an old place of learning, and the tomb of the gods carved out below Yarnum should be familiar to every hunter. Well, once a group of young Bergenworth scholars discovered a holy medium deep within the tomb. This led to the founding of the Healing Church and the establishment of blood healing. In this sense, everything sacred in Yarnum can be traced back to Bergenworth. The scholars of Bergenworth delved deep into the dungeons and discovered a great deal of artifacts. We do not know exactly what was found, but it led to the foundation of the Healing Church and the establishment of blood healing. Communication with the Great Ones was nearly impossible. One person, Runesmith Carroll, spent time studying the speech and created visual representations of what she heard. These runes could be used by the hunters to strengthen themselves. Master Willem did not like the use of blood healing and wanted nothing to do with it. He wanted insight and to ascend humanity to godhood. But others disagreed and thought blood healing was the better way and the clearer path to ascension. One such person was Lawrence, a highly tenured student at Bergenworth. Master Willem, I've come to bid you farewell. Oh, I know, I know. You think now to betray me. No, but you will never listen. I tell you, I will not forget our adage. We are born of the blood, made men by the blood, undone by the blood. 
our eyes are yet to open. Fear the old blood. I must take my leave. Lawrence went on to head the healing church. People would come from all over to be cured of their ailments with the old blood. This made the church a very powerful institution in Yarnum. Like in the dungeons below, the old blood became overused in Yarnum. Slowly, the population began to transform into hideous and dangerous beasts. The population of Yarnum became infected with what was known as Ashen Blood. The Ashen Blood caused the transformations to accelerate. Soon, Yarnum was overrun, and the church sent out hunters to destroy them. A section of Yarnum across the Great Bridge was blocked off, and what is now known as Old Yarnum was burned to the ground. This was the first hunt. Inception Theory Here is where my theory takes place. These events have already taken place before you've entered Yarnum. I believe that, because of the actions of the first hunt, these events grabbed the attention of a great one. Because of what the Healing Church did with the hunters, the Moon Presence, a great one that ascended from Thumuru, captured all those responsible for the first hunt and trapped them in the original nightmare. In order to keep all those trapped, German, whom was the head of the hunters from the workshop, became the Moon Presence's host. Becoming a host allows the Great One power over them. That is why German is trapped in the Hunter's Dream. With the power of the Moon Presence, this enabled Murgo, another Great One, to latch on the Mikalash. Ah, Cos. Or some say Cosm. Do you hear our prayers? Ah. Oh. We shall not abandon the dream. No one can catch us. No one can stop us now. <laughs> and from within a nightmare, another nightmare was born. Simultaneously, Koss, another great one, enacted the same thing, trapping Lady Maria in her dying moments as a host. A way of punishment for killing her and making her child an orphan. Not possible. That many dreams within dreams is too unstable. Three nightmares tied together with the fabric of the moon presence holding it all together. The events happen in their own plane of existence until your character enters the dream and begins the hunt. As time passes in the nightmare, more and more of the inhabitants are taken over by the old blood until all of Yarnum. Bergenworth, Canehurst, and the surrounding areas are totally infected with beasthood. What do you think about this theory? Click on the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the content. If you'd like to see a video of me breaking down each of the nightmares, let me know in the comments.
I'm very thankful for your support and for watching.